Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife, Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Dunkirk. What do you know about this movie? Uh, this is Christopher Nolan. Yes. And I believe it's a war film. Also, yes. I think Harry Styles is in this. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know about this movie. I'm team Jason Sudeikis, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a Christopher Nolan movie. I've seen this. I don't remember the location that I saw it. Maybe I wasn't like fully paying attention or whatever. I really don't remember the story. I more remember certain elements of the movie, like certain shots, uh, the sound, obviously. Christopher Nolan films beautiful movies. Mm -hmm. So I think I remember more like images and certain like feelings and stuff, but not necessarily like what actually happens or a lot of the characters. There's two characters that I know. I won't say anything to spoil anything, uh, but like two actors that I really like. But pretty much we saw Oppenheimer a couple weeks ago and we realized that there's only really a few Christopher Nolan movies that we have not seen. Yeah. And there's a couple of directors or at least Quentin Tarantino, like we watched his entire filmography and we're like, why not knock out Christopher Nolan? So this is up on the list. Yeah, we've been working our way through directors, actors. Genres or yeah. yeah. So lots of different series going on, but yeah, we really enjoyed Oppenheimer. So I'm really excited to check out this film, I know that this is more recent, like 20... 2017, I believe. Okay, yeah. So I didn't think it was that long ago, but yeah, I'm expecting great things because it's Christopher Nolan. Yeah, and we've watched a handful of war-related stuff with Masters of the Air, Oppenheimer, Patton. So uh, I think you've appreciated and enjoyed a lot of the war stuff. Yeah, which prior to this channel was not a genre that I was interested in, um, which is why I haven't seen most of these films. <laughs> Um, but I've been proven wrong time and time again. I really enjoy the war films now, so I'm excited for this. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, a link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Already starting off with like a, the sound like that little tension. like, yeah, I want to talk about that after the movie, but I won't say much now. Whoa, we surround you. That's gonna be terrifying to see something like that. <sighs> Damn. I was gonna say, they're getting hit. Oh. Holy shit. Down to one. Oh man, a whole wall of them. Only. Oh, that's good side. Damn, almost got it from friendly fire. And I like how you never saw the enemy. Yeah. <sighs> Jeez. Wow. Yeah, never got that poop. <laughs> oh. Burying him? I don't know. Or stealing from him. Oh. Took his boots? Yeah. There's been almost no dialogue. It's grenadiers, mate. Did not understand what he said. I think he's in the wrong line. Oh. So many people on this beach. The mole. Uh-oh. Oh. 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 Wow, that was an insane shot. Yeah, that was crazy. Where's the bloody Air Force? 
just surrounded, stuck on this beach. So wild to think that they just like get back up, get back in line. Okay, so it was one week, one day. Stripper and load those life jackets. Some men across the channel at Dunkirk need taking off. Oh, okay. Lots of men. We have one hour, one day, and one week. Somebody got us. That looks like a... Uh... Tom Hardy? Yeah. It is Tom Hardy. Oh. <laughs> I mean, saving that guy, but also their key to getting on that ship. Yep. Foam? I think it's like, yeah, foam from the water. Get out of the way! Okay, out of the way! The ship's about to leave. About to leave. Along the road, all the way. Are they going to make it if they don't have the armband? Right, yeah, that little medical armband. Guy's got to hustle. Can't take this music. <laughs> yeah. Find the bar line! Any more room? So far away still. Was that the shoe guy? I think so. Why is dad look so suspicious? <laughs> All right, we'll take it. It's already gone, right? Oh. It's trying to go. Oh. Oh, no. Well, everyone else got over, right? Yeah. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the, the other one's still there. Oh. What are you doing? You do know where we're going. Into war, George. I'll be useful, sir. Wasn't, wow. Yeah, I wasn't waiting for the Navy going himself. Damn, it's fucking so hard. Mr. Dorset! One of ours, George. So low. So many people on that scale between the two. On my mark, footage two, join left. Oh. That Ooh. looks great. Wow. Footage two, I have you in my pool. I have no eyes on footage leader. Over. One bit for the look. You lose one? Yeah. We need to run a new cable, sir. They're scrambling. Oh. How are they going to get to the boat? One stretcher takes the space of seven standing men. Excuse me. One stretcher oh. equals seven men? We're in artillery range from the west. If anything else sinks here, the mole's blocked and we're stuck. If there's anything that drafts over three feet can't get near, we don't have enough small boats to ferry men to the destroyers. The mole it is there, gentlemen. The mole. Man, they said they were hoping to get 30,000 back out of 400,000. A plane? Boat? Ship. Whale? <laughs> <laughs> Was that a person? Oh yeah, you're right. I wonder how long he's been out there. What's your name? Killian? It's Killian. Okay. All right, keep letting me know. My gay stick would have been knocked about that. Oh. Did you turn back? No, no. I'm fairly confident it's just a gauge. Oh. Damn. Just really are sitting ducks. Cut her loose and push her off. We can't let her sink at the boat. Push down, bloody 
If it sinks, they can't get any other boats in. Yeah. Damn, so many wounded on that. Just can't get out. That went down so fast. Right, we're about five minutes out, so climb to 2000, over. Let's find you another ship. No sense in hiding anymore. Pulling each other down. It's got slammed between the boats, I think. I wonder where he's going. I don't know. Is he French? This guy? Yeah. See, that's the thing. I don't know. You saw him take the boots, but did he take the whole uniform? Yeah. I don't know if he's French, English, or... Oh. I'd be like, he's not my friend. Yeah, you want to be by the exits. I mean, they're kind of sealed in there, right? Where are we going? Dunkirk. Probably thought they were going the other way. Peter, we got space for a man to lie down. Just in there. I'll get you some more tea. Oh. Didn't lock it. Maybe should have locked it. Yeah. What an interesting room that locks from the outside anyways. Yeah. Hey, girl. 11 o'clock. She's lining up to drop her load on that minesweeper. Right, us? Yeah, 109's off our starboard. I feel like that guy's about to get it and he's not gonna know how much fuel he has. I always like tweak and turn my head. I feel like it didn't even phase it. Nice. It's getting close. She's turning, you must have damaged her. Where's he got scrapped? Oh, I got one of So tense. Yeah. Oh. Damn. gonna open the door I don't even know what angle everything anything's at yeah go to the light Ooh. just how hard it is to get out or away from a boat that's going down it's so dark what's your fuel you're at 15 gallons 15 gallons, understood. 15? Is yeah. that not you should head back? Well, he's just trying to belly land it? Yeah. In the water? Because the, the waves weren't too bad, I think that's what he was saying. Not bad. Actually, very good. I think it was going down quick. trying to figure out this one week one week one, one day one, one day, hour yeah. i feel like it's either they're all gonna meet yeah at that time i won't say anything well, leave off your capsize the boat she's gone over twice on the way out here oh Whoa. it's holding on still yeah Whoa. so within Seven days he ends up here alone. Call me down, mate. Call me down. Call me down, mate. You're all right. I'm just gonna keep some pressure on. 
Knocked him down the stairs. It's like so peaceful and then split in with the burst. Got him. He's gotta go back. Oh, oh a bunch of people jumping off. Just trying anything to get off. Swim it. Hey. Oh, wow. Were they just laying like in the water? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Look out! She's grounded! So when a tide comes in, she's not. They're just gonna hope a grounded boat is gonna get taken back out. Yeah, when the tide comes back. You brave lad. Uh, you, Mr. Dawson, it's the best thing I've ever done. You all right? I don't even know what he said. No, oh, I was just paying attention to the blood. Yeah, the blood's not good. I can't see. He's not letting it go. Yeah. And I'm sure he doesn't even know if he would make it back anyways. Then it's good that you're army and I'm navy, isn't it? There. Vanquisher. Hopefully the ship doesn't have a hole in the bottom. Desperately low. It's bad, Dad. We turn back? Probably. For George. That's a hind call. We'll go for that minesweeper there. That's close. coming. How is he gonna relay this? It's barely coming out. Oh, it's him. <laughs> yeah, the other I thought way. it was the other guy. Well, if he is German, maybe that would help. <laughs> it's... Why'd you leave your boat? In case the Germans come. Ooh. Bullet hole. Best of luck, Collins. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're watching you we're watching that scene from a different perspective. <laughs> Sounded a lot rougher this time. Oh no. But then this boat's sinking, right? No. At some point? It's hard to tell the boats from the sky apart. He's probably dead. Simon, I hear you, Peter. I hear you. Maybe alive. Maybe. I feel like his dad needs to do something, especially after George. I mean, they did get Killian. Jeez. I mean, holes in the boat's not going to help. How fast are they going to get to him? Oh, behind him. You're going to plug it with. No idea. Ooh. We have to plug it. After you, mate. Got a lot more to plug. Oh shit. Did you drop it? Yeah. He not speak English. If he does this with an accent thick in his sauerkraut sauce. Sure daft. Tell him. Not looking good. Come on. She's with a bloody frog. A cowardly little Jew jumping frog. He's French, not German. As soon as he pokes his head out, they'll slaughter him. Better him than me. He saved our lives. And he's about to do it again. Yeah, he opened the door for him. I'll live with it. 
What's wrong? Go on. One man's not gonna make enough difference. That's what I was thinking. Right. Damn. Smashed it. Wow. Afternoon. <laughs> oh no. Damn. How quick they go. Just with your hands. Is that all the small boats <laughs> yeah. coming? What do you see? Home. Damn, what a sight. Just as many small boats as they can get. Well, it just like washes over me that there's 400,000 people there. There's men in the water! So many. Yeah, how many can this boat hold? Lines are a lot shorter. Damn. Oh. On reserve. <gasps> At least he told them. Yeah. Is he stuck? What's I think, happening? I think he's stuck. Oh. Careful, careful down there. He's dead, mate. So be bloody careful with him. Didn't make it. Will you be okay? Yeah. Wow. He's gone through enough. Yeah. And he didn't do it on purpose. Now, where are they supposed to go? Yeah, I gotta get away from it now. And he's covered in oil. You got him. So close. If he can drop some bombs, all these people are destroyed. They all catch fire. Oof. Oof. I don't even know how you get away from that. Or if you even can. You have all three scenes come together, or yeah. all three timelines come together in that moment. Where are you from? Out of time! Listen for my instructions. Point your south! Still not over. Got him with nothing. Christ, how many you got in there? How many as he could take. It wasn't even about the number, it was just having to get out when that plane was going down. Where the hell were you? They know where you were. Yeah, I was fighting the whole time. How dastardly to say that. Well, we did it survive. That's enough. That old bloke wouldn't even look us in the eye. It's blind. Come on, private! I know we're officers, but it's us or the enemy. <laughs> so now's not the time to be particular. Slept through everything. Well, Churchill got his 30,000. And then some. Almost 300,000. Damn.
must expect another blow to be struck almost immediately. We shall go on to the end. Cut into the vapor. And even if this island or a large part of it were subjugated and starving, in God's good time, the new world with all its power and might steps forth to the rescue and the liberation of the old. All right, that was Dunkirk. What'd you think? That was great. You liked it? I liked it. It's like way different. Definitely different. Thinking about like Christopher Nolan films in general, like it had the same kind of vibe, but it still felt different. Yeah. Not as like trippy as a lot of the films, but I guess after watching Oppenheimer, I feel like this one is a little bit more on that path versus like, something like uh inception or something yeah yeah i loved the use of time in this yeah um, obviously the one hour one week one day i didn't know exactly how that was going to come into play it was like is this taking place in that amount of time or whatever but for it to come together i don't want to say one moment because there were so many people that kind of split off that things overlapped a little bit yeah there's a lot of overlap and like you do obviously are jumping around and you you witness the same events numerous times from different, from perspectives. different perspectives and stuff yeah. and i guess you can kind of say like it does all come together at a certain point yeah so i i loved that aspect of it i feel like it just worked so well with yeah. the film and i'm sure on a second watch you would be able to pick up the events mm -hmm. uh, like obviously this is my second time watching so i was able to kind of tell like some of the planes you know flying over oh like we i know that that's tom hardy flying over some of the boats you can tell which boats are which or yeah you know based off of who's jumping off of what boat like you can really start to see oh where are we in every single scene in terms of the timeline and if anything i feel like the one week mm -hmm. that kind of throws it off a little bit because i feel like that wasn't a week like it was maybe like two nights two or three nights or something yeah I, but that doesn't go with the one one day one, this, one hour one yeah, you, yeah you can't be like one three days or something so i feel like if you pay too much attention on like that description maybe you'll like force it to understand the timelines a little bit um but i think if you watch this again i mean you you picked up multiple scenes but i think if you watch it again you would really see everything yeah like Oppenheimer that I mentioned. I don't want to keep comparing it to that. I'm just uh, the things that are like that I liked about them. <laughs> um, the sound in this was absolutely incredible. I feel like it was like the entire movie. There's always like a sound going on. Yeah. And I could feel like my heart racing. So I, uh, after I watched this movie, I saw like a video, I believe it's about Dunkirk. I'll have to show it to you later, but it's like this technique with the sound where essentially it's pretty much throughout the entire movie, but it always sounds like it's increasing. Mm -hmm. So it's something to some tone or something. And it's like, it's really trippy when you watch the YouTube video, mm -hmm. uh, like describing the sound and then you realize it being in effect in Dunkirk, it has that effect of constantly like stressing, stressing you out. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, anytime like I kind of would like cross my arm over, like I could feel <laughs> my heart beating and I was like, oh my God, like this is stressing me out anyways. Yeah. Just with everything going on, but then add that to the mix. Right. And like the, the sound kind of has like a clicking talk it talk, uh, a, a clicking. Oh, like a clock. Like a clock. And that also kind of plays in with the timelines and also uh, heavily into like Tom Hardy's story or timeline where like he's essentially up against the time mm. because he's yeah, constantly running out of fuel and yeah. the gauge and he's checking his watch all the time. And yes. like, you know, he's on borrowed time. Yes. So everything just blends together very, very well. Yeah. It's just so clever. It's definitely a very clever film. And, you know, we watch a ton of war movies on this channel and this very much felt 
so different. Yes. I mean, there are a lot of war films that we have watched that also have felt really different, like say like Apocalypse Now. Certain films, they just have a much different feel than like, I guess you would say the standard. Yeah, like a traditional of, war film. Yeah, traditional is probably better. But this was one of those that just feels so different. Also the cast, like we have a massive cast. So good. It's also very, very light on dialogue. dialogue. Which oh you, my gosh, uh, yes. You picked up on that like immediately, like the first like 10 minutes of the movie, almost no one says anything. Yeah, I mean, you really have, I don't know what any of these characters' names are, if they even have names. Right, yeah. Tommy, I guess, is the main one you could say. Okay, yeah, so we watched Tommy with his friends and like, they're gone. Yeah. And you really, the first thing he says, I think is like, I'm British or something like that. Or yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, he's like trying to identify himself, and that's like really it. Like you don't get a whole lot, and then I think in return, uh, the French are like, like get out of here or something to that extent. Right. So there's really not a lot of dialogue, but it, it doesn't matter. Like it didn't matter that there wasn't a lot of dialogue. No, because like you were getting at before, like the the cast and the acting, it's incredible. Yeah. To be able to kind of get some of these emotions without much of any dialogue. I mean, like Killian Murphy's in this for like four minutes, but he <laughs> like really covers this range of someone who is, you see him at technically in the first time, mm -hmm. he's composed and stuff mm -hmm. and he has shell shock. Then he's like distraught because he accidentally hurt this kid mm -hmm. and then gets a little bit back when he gets up and starts helping people onto the boat. And he's curious about the health of the kid and stuff. Like he covers so much and so little. Yeah. You have the other uh, French person who was with Tommy, who like doesn't say almost anything until he's pretty much interrogated at the very last second. Yeah. Like he adds this like major stress to everything because you're not really quite sure. Like even Harry Styles' character calls him out for being a German spy, which it's like, I don't even know if you really see any Germans or any enemies really. No, I don't think that they really showed anyone. Obviously you have the planes, but you're not seeing the pilots. Right. Um, and then every time there's like gunshots, it's just- Gunshots. Gunshots, yeah. There's no person with that. Which I feel like makes it even creepier mm -hmm. because they're all surrounded and they are much closer than like you would think. So yeah. it's believable that he could be like a German spy or German deserter or something, so. Yeah, it's very interesting because it has like, especially with the tones that you were talking about, it has like the vibe of like a horror type film. Oh yeah. With the uh, falling flyers and saying like, this is you, like you're surrounded. Yeah. Then in like a lot of horror movies that I feel like are the most effective in being terrifying, are when you don't see like yeah, the monster. Exactly. I guess. Yeah. So in this, it's like it's kind of taking from that in that you're not seeing any of like the enemy. No. That's a great way to kind of describe this. It really is so tense and stressful, but it has that horror element because you're constantly on edge and just trying to survive. And it's very bleak. And I mean, every single time a ship goes down. It's just terrible. It's not like something where everyone just jumps off the boat and is fine. Like the majority of people on every single boat don't make it out. No, obviously in every boat scene is like that, but I feel like it was devastating to see the, after the plane crash and the oil catch fire. Yeah. Like what a way to go. Yeah, you either drown or burn. Like those are your two choices. Or kind of both. Right. It starts off with like the, uh, the medical boat or whatever going off right there, like right off the uh, the mole, they called it. Yeah, and their priority was just to get it out of the way so that the mole was still usable. Yeah. Which it's like the kind of the decisions that you need to make in the moment to think about the future when you're just like watching all of these people die. Yeah, I mean, there's that great line where it's like a stretcher is the equivalent of seven people standing. Yeah. So it's like, do we get the injured out or do we get More seven people. soldiers out? Yeah. Like, so it's just a, a tragic setting and it's a very short movie. Yeah. But you're constantly on edge. The timelines are not super confusing. And once you get them, I think it adds a lot to the movie. Mm -hmm. But something that I love is how many like hopeful moments. Yeah, I guess you would say hopeful or just like glimpses of humanity 
Yeah. I guess, because, I mean, you're watching war, it's devastating, and we're seeing a lot of death and struggling in those moments, but to see the small things, like the moment that you see all of those boats are right. coming to the shoreline, um, and the the little moments where they're like yelling to each other, and you know, with Tom Hardy, that kind of whole sequence of him gliding. Yeah, Tom Hardy is my favorite part of this movie. I mean, you love Tom. Hardy. I love Tom Hardy, but he has that amazing moment. I mean. It, it is so terrifying when there's like a character who like slowly starts looking at the sky yeah. and then you can kind of start hearing it and it gets louder and louder and it's just like someone coming just bombing them mm -hmm. and obviously at the very end you know they're all there just waiting to get hit and what can you do you're a sitting duck you mm -hmm. can't really run or anything you just have to hope it doesn't hit you and tom hardy i mean he had already taken out like four planes or mm -hmm. something multiple bombers i believe and without any fuel, just totally gliding, comes in, takes out that plane, and just like the whole beach changes everything. They're all cheering and everything. Like, thank God, like something went our way. And you combine that with like the hopeful moment of all of the citizens uh, coming in with their own personal boats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, a good ending because when you start the movie to think that, okay, if we can get 30,000 out of 400,000, that's good enough. Yeah. And they end up getting 300,000, if not more, because they, you know, that Stay one guy behind. stays there. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot that it's packed in like an hour and a half. Yeah. Not in a bad way, but it feels a lot longer than that. Yeah. Like when you're watching it. And it, I think that has to do with the stress <laughs> factor of it. We saw Barry Keoghan. <laughs> yeah, Barry Keoghan. In uh, Masters of the Air. So this was really cool to see him obviously much younger also in a war film but completely different character and he felt so young like an innocent and that yeah. was a really heartbreaking sequence with peter um like you want to root for them and peter loses his best friend because you got a little emotional there so what got you was it the paper, like getting George in the paper, or was it just overall in general, or? I think just watching like so much devastation and you're like all the tension that you have like throughout the whole movie and to finally get something good. I'm gonna say I wasn't a fan of Alex is Harry Styles' character. Like I said, <laughs> Team Jason Snake is. <laughs> I feel like his character was really. He was a, sh a piece of shit for I guess the majority of this movie. Yeah, I mean, I understand like he's probably afraid and it's like a dangerous situation and all the other things, but I don't know, he was just annoying to me and yeah. like a, a big downer when everyone else is just like trying to survive, you know? So to hear him just kind of like, oh, uh, like what are they gonna say about us? Like when we get back, yeah, like blah, blah, spit blah. on us. And... and then to have Tommy like read the paper and then all of a sudden it, you know, you sh see the people at the train station and they're so happy. They're so welcoming yeah. uh, to get everyone back. That was so moving. And then obviously for George, Barry Hogan's character, like you have that conversation that he has about, you know, not doing well in school and all he wants to do for his mom is just make it into the paper. So for him to make it, you know, to the front page, he's a hero. That was just so nice to see. Yeah. So uh, kind of the whole end sequence, I mean, it was beautiful watching Tom Hardy, obviously not at the very end there, but when he's just like gliding and use, you know, he's doing everything he can. He goes on a reserve. He's manually having to open that uh, the landing gear, right. all of it. It's just wrapped up so like beautifully. So that was just kind of moving to me. No, yeah, I mean, I'm the exact same way. I mean, going from kind of the uh, fear that Alex has of the return as like a coward or whatever was going through his mind and to see his mood change when that like guy put in like the whatever they were like soda sodas or something, or yeah. he immediately was like oh my god like i'm back and i'm everyone's welcoming and, yeah uh, like you said the paper and the landing sequence for tom hardy that's probably what i remember the most and if anything watching it again like i'm a sucker for like sacrifice type of stuff yeah you are especially the second time if i watch something the first time and someone like sacrifices themselves 
I really enjoy it, but it doesn't really make me emotional. But if I watch that a second time and I know what's going to come, mm -hmm. then it like really gets me. Yeah. So I know that like Tom Hardy is going to keep fighting and, you know, use every single last drop. And I knew that, you know, he was going to kind of bring hope to everyone on the beach. And I, I also knew that like him landing, he's obviously going to land there. The Germans were so close. There's no possible way he could have landed safely, mm -hmm. really. So he just burned his plane and just waited to be captured. So you just know that he's taken prisoner at the end. But I think, like you said, everything wraps up so beautifully. Plus, you had that like knowing sacrifice and it made me emotional where I doubt I was emotional the first time I watched this. Yeah. But this time, yeah, it's a couple of tears for sure. Oh, we've had a couple in a row. Yeah, it's just a couple of crybabies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is, I feel like the most different Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I agree. But I really enjoy it. Yeah. And especially because it's short, it's uh, it's a, like a real quick ride. Yeah, especially for a war film. War, <laughs> war film. film. And especially for Christopher Nolan. Right, usually his films are pretty long. At least I feel like they are. But it was awesome to uh, to show this to you. And I think we only have like two Christopher Nolan films left. I want to say Tenet and like Insomnia or something like that. I think you're right. Yeah, I'm excited to check out the last of our Christopher Nolan for now. I'm sure <laughs> it won't be the last last because we just had this huge success of Oppenheimer. So right, I'm, I'm sure, sure he's got more. <laughs> coming work uh but yeah so i i really enjoyed this enjoyed i used like yeah it was an experience i was so stressed the whole time <laughs> um but it was such a great film so if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this as well as everything else we've reacted to the link to our patreon is in the description if you'd like to interact with us and any other types of social media all those links are in the description as well and with that peace everyone bye bye